This video is a beginner's guide on how to get started growing spirulina with the kit I have available at bluegrownlife.com. The kit contains all the basics you need to get started, and for those of you who may be a seasoned spirulina farmer, the kit would really work great for a backup culture. So my average environmental conditions in my room and in my household fit within the minimum requirements spirulina needs to grow, so I don't have any extra equipment like a light, heater or an air pump. And the great thing about growing spirulina without electricity is it's a carbon negative process and can make a small difference towards combating climate change. If you'd like a quick overview on those basics of growing spirulina and some of those thresholds that spirulina needs, check out my video, How to Grow Spirulina. So here's everything you need to do to start growing spirulina. If you decide to use an air stone, soak it in distilled water for five minutes to let it hydrate and remove any particles from it. The air stone is not necessary, but I think it's a nice touch. Next, clean your container, lid, and hosing with a little bit of dish soap and water and make sure to rinse thoroughly. You want your container to be totally clean of any potential contaminants, but also any residual soap because that might kill the allergy, so rinse well. Let the container dry a bit since your tap water may contain some chlorine and that too will kill your spirulina. Next, add a cup or two of distilled water to mix your salts and nutrients together. If you have filtered water and are unsure if there's chlorine in it, let it aerate for a few days and shake it up once in a while as chlorine will naturally degrade over time. Be more careful if you're using tap water. Um, a lot of times your local water source is treated with a lot of calcium, magnesium bicarbonate, or chlorine. You just want to be more careful of that. So some extra steps may be needed to be taken. Next, swirl the water around so all the salts and nutrients are dissolved in the solution. Then add enough distilled water so there's about 3 inches of space at the top of your container. That's about 1,050 milliliters of solution. Now it's time to feed the tube through the lid. The one-way air valve has arrows on it showing the direction of airflow. You'll take the end of the tube where air will be coming out and feed it through the top of the lid since you'll want the other end bubbling air at the bottom of the tank. After you've fed the tube through the lid, connect your air stone to the end and gently lower it into the water. Use your air blower to pump some air into the side of the tube that's out of the water and make sure you've got bubbles coming out the other side in the water. Finally, add the 50 milliliters of spirulina culture into the container and that should leave about 2.5 inches of space at the top. Now that you have everything added and mixed, you'll want to move the newly transferred spirulina culture to a dark corner of your room where it won't get knocked over and leave it there undisturbed for about one to three days. On the fourth day, you should move it a little closer to a light source during the day, but not in direct sunlight. Use the air blower to pump air into the tank once per day on days four through 15. And after the 15th day, you can pump air into your tank as often as you'd like. In fact, the more the better. Just make sure you're doing it at least twice per day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Like houseplants, there may be some variation, so the days I've given are more of a guide than an exact science. All right, and that's pretty much it. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, thanks for watching.